I love buying at card shows, sports cards especially, but when it comes to non-sport cards, sometimes it's best to hit up the internet. Made some great buys in the last week. Most of them are in. I want to show them to you today. All right, so I've got some really fun non-sport lots that I recently purchased on eBay. I tried to get some stuff on whatnot. I haven't had a lot of success there, but eBay I'm able to do pretty well on. Some of these items are items that you've seen me buy in the past. Some are new things. Some are some things I took a chance on. And one item isn't here yet, but I wanted to talk about it and at least show on the screen what I had purchased. Let's take a look at what I bought. And I now have a referral code for Card Dealer Pro. So if you're considering signing up for Card Dealer Pro, please enter the code DOLLARBOX, all one word, D-O-L-L-A-R-B-O-X, and it will get you 500 free scans when you sign up for Card Dealer Pro. The first lot is a lot you've seen me buy many a times, and that is Pac-Man sticker cards. Now, there are three different Pac-Man sticker card sets. There's this original one like this, where it's got the blue backs, and these were made in 1980. There is the black back version, and when I say black back, I mean the writing, the color, or the print color on the back is black. And then there's Miss Pac-Man. Um, so actually there's four. There's Miss Pac-Man, and then there's also Super Pac-Man. Super Pac-Man are pretty rare. I had bought a big lot of those a while ago, um, they hadn't sold for a bit and then boom, they just started selling. And then I had just had somebody buy out all the super Pac-Man that I had left. I've been selling a lot of the regular Pac-Man recently as well. So it was time to look for a new lot. Got a pretty decent price on this. It's got a good variety, not a lot of duplicates. It does have some of the, um, not black cards, I guess, if you want to call it that stickers, some of the more character looking stickers I actually just sold a copy of this yesterday. Um, lots of different Pac-Man quotes. Here's the, the little banner stickers you could stick to things. Um, weekends were made for Pac-Man, so just a lot of fun 80s type stuff. People would stick them to the machines. I remember that going into arcades, and these things would be stuck to the side of a machine. Um, or somebody would stick the, uh, <clears throat> let's see, I think there's one in here. They'd stick the fan club sticker on there, and then they would sign it. <laughs> so, uh, kind of fun. But anyway, uh, I like buying lots of these. They do sell well. They're small. Um, generally, when I get sales on them, it's multiple card sales, which I like that as well. So, uh, so I got another big stack of those. Pretty easy to list, too. All right. Then the next thing I bought is another one. I'll just go over the ones that uh, first that I kind of regularly buy and I'm more restocking. Uh, and the next one is some um, uh, Ren and Stimpy stuff. So I've got, I got a bunch of the tattoos were sent with it. I'm not sure what I can do with those. We'll have to see. And then um, some of the full, the full size tattoos are in here too. This is from the Nickelodeon set. It's kind of a fun bonus. Bunch of the activity cards. So this is a Pen pal, so it's a little pencil holder. You'd punch this out and the pencil would go through it and you'd have Ren Hoek hanging onto your pencil, stuff like that. Um, there is some market for it. Uh, here is Stimpy Vision, so you put your eye through, <laughs> look through the Stimpy's eyes there. Uh, just some goofy stuff. Uh, what are these? A medic alert bracelet you could wear. Here's another one of those pen pals ones. Um, Taj Mahal. I'm not sure what the Taj Mahal one is. Um, but I got a few of these. It looks like it's a drawing on the back. I don't know, but I got some interesting stuff. Here's some of the Nickelodeon stickers. So I got some of those as well. And then, of course, some of the Prism cards, which are the bigger sellers. Uh, I do have a pretty fair amount of Prism stuff in, so I was kind of looking for a lot that had uh, some more variety, kind of like what you're seeing here with the tattoos and things. 
And this one had a lot more of the um, the older comic Ren and Stimpy cards. That's what a lot of these are. I actually just sold two of these today too. So um, those do have demand just like the, the Prism cards. So another great lot. Pretty good price on that one as well. Easy to make my margins there. And then I'll show these two because this is also another one that I buy regularly. I was running really low on turtle stickers. Um, you can buy these pretty cheap in lots, and I don't know why because they, they sell so high individually. I, I started moving the prices up because, like, the character ones would sell so fast. Like, Leonardo, I would put at $2.99, they would sell instantly. So then I moved them up to, like, $4.99, they would sell fast. It'd be down to $1, I'd change it to $5.99, and I'd sell it at that price. So it was it was time to kind of reload. So a lot of like the, the personal character stickers or the individual character stickers. I never really know what I'm going to get with cards in most cases. So I was happy to see I got a couple of Michelangelo, a Donatello, um, and those first edition cards of those characters you can you can also get a premium for. And then um, and I didn't go over these like in super detail yet, so I'll look through them again. But I got a bunch of base cards. And what I generally will do with these is I'll just lot them off into card uh, lots of twelve, um, so I can put six in each card saver uh, back to back in a business envelope, and I'll just get like three ninety nine, two ninety nine, something like that for those lots. So it's just easy way to get a decent chunk of money back right away, um, and get those shipped out. And that's pretty much pure profit um, because the real money's in the in the stickers. And I actually bought two lots of those. So this one again, I got some some nice character cards out of this. I got Raphael. Here's another Leo, another Leo, and then same kind of with the like the Ren and Stimpy thing. I was trying to get a little variety, so I did get some of the movie stickers and some of the series two cartoon stickers. But of course, I got a big stack of the Series 1 stickers, which are the bigger money. Um, do have some of the uh, movie cards. And some of these you can do a little better with, too. Again, the character ones do well. Um, this one's kind of cool because it's got Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird in it. So I think I can get a premium for that one. This one has Jim Henson on it. I've sold that card before for a premium. <clears throat> but most of these are just, like, scenes from the movie. So again... Anything that I isn't, you know, a, a main character focused card, I'll just put those in lots and sell those off. There isn't a ton of them in this lot. <clears throat> and then, of course, we got some more just the Series 1 cards here. Some more lots of those. Turtle stuff, super hot, so you, you really can't go wrong. And then this, I think these are Series 2 with the black. I go back and, and look. Um, so I got some black ones with this lot, as well as some more movie ones. I don't think any of these are particularly meaningful <clears throat> as the movie ones. But anyway, so just kinda, I just kind of run around and make all these little lots, and the turtle stuff sells fast. Doesn't take up much space that way since you're selling some lots. So that's, oh, and one more. I had a, a Turtle Secret of Ooze sticker. So it's got Splinter on there with the ooze on the border. So those are kind of my restock buys, if you will. Um, actually, I lied. I got one more. This one was kind of mind-blowing. I got 10 sticker sets from Gremlins. That's right. 10 complete 11-card sticker sets. So somebody opened a lot of boxes of Gremlins. Um, but these were really cheap, like 15 bucks or something for all 10 sets. Uh, couldn't pass that up. That's super cheap. And I do sell a lot of Gremlin stickers. I I just sold a, a Gremlin sticker this morning. It was from Series 2, but still, I um, sell a lot of these as well. So I uh, hadn't bought any Gremlin stickers in a long time, so I was kind of looking for some. And then this, this giant lot popped up uh, of 10 sets or pretty inexpensive, so I just grabbed them all right away. Easy to list, 10 copies of each, done. So um, that'll get me some quantity listings too, which is always nice. All right, moving right along. Uh, the next thing I bought was a set of Kong stickers. 
These are from 2005. So kind of a, a random year of printing. Cards weren't as big right then. Love the look of these. They remind me a lot of the Batman ones. I was buying um, sticker cards at the National. Look at this Rampage. How cool is that? <clears throat> oh, that one's Rage. This is Rampage. Um, just really cool looking sticker cards from the Kong movie. And I was pleasantly surprised that a few of the cards were thrown in as well. And this says uh, C3. So I'm guessing these were to promote a video game or something. Because um, if you look at the back, it has the C2, which is generally like a promo number. And that has like the video game rating on there. So anyway, I was... I was there's four of those. There's four of those that were thrown in. I think I'll make pretty good money on the Kong stickers just on their own right. And then I've got the cards to sell as well. All right, next is a lot of 1984 Indiana Jones sticker inserts. I don't see a ton of these. Um, they, they don't have like a giant market. Like sales are not fantastic on them. But I think just having them in, it'll be, uh, again, some things I can expand on. As far as offerings and, you know, people come to buy some Batman stickers, I'll throw a few of these in there, some Star Wars stickers. So I just try to build out some, some bigger orders that way. And they weren't very expensive. So always, always key. All right. The next one, I, I was kind of worried I overpaid for this. And then as I thought about it a little bit more and I looked at the cards a little bit more and kind of my history of selling them, I've only sold a few of these cards before. But I just, I like them so much, and I really think over the long run, they're going to maintain market and go up in value, if anything. And that's the original Marvel Masterpieces. So these are from 94, I believe. Yep, 1994, so definitely older. But the artwork on them is just great. Here's a couple of Apocalypse. They feature character, like a specific character on the card, which always does better for me than like scenes or teams or something like that so uh, i mean here's here's a carnage got a couple of carnage here look at how cool that is so just bought a big nice big lot of these they're all just the base captain universe <clears throat> they're all just the base but i thought um again good thing to have on hand i sell some of the gaming ones here and there this could be you know added on to those sales like a blade it was like blade great character um, let's see, try to see if I can find it. Or here's a good one. Here's Black Panther. So you just, you have all these movie characters now. So the audience is just wider for some of these cards. Black Knight, one of my favorites when I was a kid. The Demi Goblin. Um, so there's a good variety here. I mean, here's Deadpool. I mean, you're going to get at least a few bucks for a Deadpool. So there's pretty much everybody in here. The main characters, things like that. Uh, it's not all just commons or anything. And then they did throw in one uh, of the silver signature cards, which I have had in the past, and they sell pretty well, where it's signed by the artist. It's it's not a real signature. It's a printed signature. Uh, gold foil signature series. And this is Blood Wrath. So um, nice little bonus there. Get that listed as well. But again, some some multiples of these cards, which will help listing get some quantity out there. And uh, just kind of expand. I really wanted to expand some Marvel cards. I don't have a ton. All right. So next we have, let's do these next. Next we have one of my favorite cards. I couldn't believe how cheap I got these. Um, it was a newer listing. I'd sent an offer and the seller bit on it pretty much right away, which was kind of weird because usually when you have a new listing, you kind of hold off on accepting an offer, but if they were trying to get rid of them, I guess. But it's these Nintendo Power Cards. And these have done pretty well for me. There's so many great characters. You think about the original Nintendo and how much is in our pop culture now from those. Um, they were tear-outs, kind of like Sports Illustrated for kids. And you go, you guys know my affinity for those cards. They were tear-outs from the magazines. Um, this one is from 1991. I think they span like three or four years. And they were pretty much to promote new games coming out. So here's Mario 3. Um, you can see on the back here the quest, the challenge, what system it's on, when it was released, things like that. So they're just really cool little info cards of 
games that matter in history. Super Mario Brothers 3 is a game that matters in video game history. Um, some not as much. You know, you have, uh, well, here, here's a great one, Zelda. There's a few Zeldas in here. Um, I think Tecmo Super Bowl was in here. That was like my favorite game. Then you got something like this, Lolo 3. I don't know that there's a huge market for that, but we got Double Dragon is in here. It's pretty cool. Double Dragon 3, Battle Toads, right? Um, so there was just, there was a, a pretty nice variety in here. Felix the Cat, well-known character. Dr. Mario, see that there? But there's definitely, like I said, ones that are not as well known, but that doesn't necessarily mean they don't sell. Um, in Sports Illustrated for Kids, the cards of people that are athletes that don't have a lot of cards, so lesser known sports, actually can sell better. So same thing with some of these video game ones. Here's Kickle Cubicle. <laughs> Never even heard of this game, but it's pretty cool. Came out in 2090. It was a puzzle game. Puzzle games are kind of big deal. Early 90s of Tetris and that kind of thing. Um, but here's a great one. Mike Tyson punch out. Gotta love that. But here's Bart versus space mutants. Um, here's a really cool one. I love the art on this one. Gauntlet too. Look at that. How awesome is that? So I just, these are just amazing. They're great characters, good games. Um, super off road here. Here's another good one. And then Tecmo Super Bowl. Heck yeah. So, loved it. Um, and that was the original Nintendo one. Yeah, in 1991. So, just great, 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 great cards. I got 100 and I think there's like, well, you'll see the graphic on the screen there from the buy. But I think it was like 180 cards, 160 cards, something like that. Tons of them. And uh, that'll be fun. And again, a lot, um, lot of quantities and stuff. Like here's two, Super Mario Land 2. Um, look at this Asteroids card. How cool is that? Uh, so anyway, so I've got uh, ooh, Hunt for Red October. <laughs> I just have fun going through these. Um, but there'll be, there'll be some quantity lists too, which I really try to, try to, I'm expressing that quite a bit in this video, but I really try to, to get that. So I'm, I can try to get some of those multi-card purchases or at least have, get a sale and then have a sales history on that uh, listing. All right. Next, I've got a like a promo lot, I guess is probably the best way to put it. I do love my non-sport promo cards. And I found this little gem of a lot. I think I had 250 card lots. Oh, yeah. There's some in a... I've got another box of stuff I forgot about. So anyway, this one uh, is kind of interesting. So this has a Cyber Force like hero card in it. It's it is sealed. It does have a original official seal on it. I don't know what I can do with this or how how it would sell, but we're gonna try. Uh, so this is number three thousand eight hundred and sixty three hero original. So kind of cool. Came in the sleeve thing, which is kind of handy because if I sell it, I can literally just ship it like that. I don't have to go buy any supplies. I always hate that with the weird size stuff if I don't have supplies for it. A um, couple other odd shaped cards were in it. This Sorayama chrome card, two card promo uncut sheet thing. So kind of interesting there. And then a couple of bigger cards, the doll's house from Sandman which was a Vertigo comic. And this one was kind of cool. It's not in great shape, but this 3D lenticular. It's got Vader there with the Stormtrooper and the officer. Uh, Three-dimensional card, 3DI1. So I still believe that's a promo. That was like what was supposed to introduce the set of those cards coming out. Anything Star Wars, you can always do well. Speaking of Star Wars, here's a promo card for Star Wars Galaxy. Pretty cool. Um, this one, I don't know what this is. This is IFO, Identified Flying Objects, and it's got this beam craft. So this is kind of a whole set of a bunch of different, like, alien spaceships that have been documented over time. Pretty cool. Deep Space Nine, so Star Trek. Can't really go wrong with Star Trek. 
Uh, these are from Firebrands, Ron Miller's Firebrands, Fantasy and Fiction. Believe it or not, fantasy stuff does really well. Hildebrandt, uh, part of his set from um, The Christmas Carol. So this would have been future, present, I don't know, one of them. This is one of the uh, um, Time Santas, if you want to call it that. Poe the Black Cat. So this is from, I think, Edgar Allan Poe stories. Uh, here's a crawl in the vortex. So these are these are fun. Here's another Christmas Carol when he sees Marley's ghost. Just this stuff will just do well. I know it will. Pinocchio. There's Pinocchio with his creator. I can't remember his name. Geppetto, I think was his name. Oh yeah, Geppetto. Here's another Pinocchio. So he did a lot of a checklist card. I don't know if those do do well on non-sport. A displaced card where it's got like the boat overturned gods and goddesses for part of that collection so you've got this like hellhound here really interesting stuff all right then we've got we get back to some marvel here's a silver sable promo card um introducing marvel series four um a coca-cola promo Captain Canuck from Semple Comics. Uh, Return of Superman. I've, I've had this card a few times. I actually have one in stock right now. So it's just kind of, again, promoting that. Uh, Zone for Prime. Zone Force Prime, I guess I should say. FBI cards. Um, Armando Garcia. And it says prototype on there. Deep Space Nine phasers. So just some really some really good variety here. Here's another Star Trek Deep Space Nine trading cards coming soon. Uh, here's a NASCAR card. This is Harry Gant. Uh, prototype. And it says coming out in June. Winston Cup Series. So I was looking for some more racing stuff. I've sold a lot of racing stuff actually the last couple weeks. So, uh, and even some of the NASCAR stuff I sold. Nightmare Before Christmas, two of the Santa promos. So those will do well. Uh, Lieutenant O'Hara promo. I've sold this one in the past. This one's kind of cool from Wizard Comics. This Kane card, and it's got a cutout. On there, so I'm not sure what what the cutout is, but Infinity Crusade from Marvel Comics. Here's a Doomsday from DC promo cards. Warhorse. This is part of the Creators Universe stuff. So some of this might not make sense, <laughs> or you're thinking, "Who the heck's going to buy that?" But trust me, there's more market than just the sports card market and uh, what you think of as the common non sport stuff. Forgotten Realms, these foil cards are pretty cool. This is kind of like a Dungeons and Dragons type of thing. I got actually got two of those. So I like that there was just some different stuff. Here's a couple of Bone 2, the Chrome set. I've sold those before. Um, these are do really well, the Hildenbrand Chromes. So this is Bill the Lizard. <laughs> his art is awesome. Uh, Wayne Barlow, his Alien Collection. Here's a Sequest promo. And I got a few of these, these Evil Ernie Chromes. These should do pretty well. Uh, actually got... One, two, three. I got six copies of that, so nice quantity there. Uh, Spirit promo card, Wizard Comics. Uh, this one I'm pretty excited about, Santa the Barbarian with the green sparkle border. Santa stuff, always always a hit. Um, Supreme promo card from Wizard. Nice looking shimmy shine on that one. Jim Lee's Stormwatch. Jim Lee, one of my favorites. Comic artist of all time. He did Batman for a long time. Uh, here's another great Santa one. Um, I can't remember what this one was called. 
Super Santa or Evil Santa or something like that. A nice chrome card there. Love it. Uh, Young Blood Refractor card. Young Blood Comics. Cyber Force. So lots of chrome, lots of color. That's those are you know just like they are in sports cards. They're important in non-sport too. Here's a Gen 13 promo. All the heroes on that. I got a couple of those. Uh, here's a Hawkman from DC Comics, the Hollow Foil series. It's pretty cool looking. A little hard to catch on camera there. I got a couple of those Hawkman. Here is a Spectre. Same thing from that Hollow Foil set. The Spectre, got a few of those, three of those. Um, I don't know what this is, Gundam MSV, but Gundam stuff is huge, uh, Japanese art type stuff. So I don't know, I'll have to look that one up a little bit, but I'm sure it'll do okay. And then another great one, this Todd McFarlane Santa, pretty awesome. I love ya. So it's Santa Todd. Um, I've seen these sell before. They do pretty well. Then Akira, another anime, popular anime series. Uh, here's Melting Pot. This one is a promo. I actually have a whole set of Melting Pot. I have to list. I didn't get that far yet. Uh, sort of random. This is a the fly sticker insert from Fright Nights. Not a promo, but uh, here's the Conan, the Barbarian promo. I've sold a few of these in the past. Here's another Conan promo. Again, chrome stuff. Gotta love the chrome. The best of the Hildebrands. I love this card. I think this one will do very, very, very well. Lots of fantasy. You got a fantasy creature there. You've got, you know, the the girl riding and all that stuff. Very cool. So that's that lot. Very different, interesting lot. Good price. I think I will do very well on it. And I've got two things in this box here. I literally just opened this. That's why I kind of um, kind of didn't have it set out. I sort of forgot about it after I had opened it. This one is two different lots. I have a 51 card promo card lot. And then this other bigger lot was just a lot of kind of random stuff that I thought looked interesting in the picture. So I'm going to give it a shot. And there's some sports, there were some sports in it too, um, which can be to some degree a bit of a saving grace because um, I do kind of know what I can get right away for pretty much any sports card. Um, so it makes me less shy about, about uh, taking a chance on, some, on a lot. Now this is really cool. This is the NFL Mike Dicka's playing cards. I've gotten these as singles before. I've never gotten an entire set, um, but it's pretty cool. They have all the different, you know, great players of the time. They're Sterling Sharp. Um, so any of the big names you can think of, Junior Seau, Ronnie Lott. And again, just an alternative for card collectors. When you have all the Howie Longs, maybe the Dick uh, playing card Howie Long is one you don't have. There's Jerry Rice. So you have, you know, all these big names in here, Barry Sanders. Um, that stuff's all going to be easy money. Emmett Smith. Uh, I don't think Brett's in here. This is from 93, I think. I don't remember what year these are from. But I think it was before, before Brett was there. Thurman Thomas, nice. Reggie White. See, he's still with the Eagles there. And there's some, like, random common players, too, of course, but Rod Woodson. So I just like cards like this. Montana, here's Dion, Aikman. Anyway, you get the idea. I didn't check to see if the full deck is there. I don't really care because I'm not going to be selling it as a full deck. Um, I am going to be lotting it off or, uh, singling it off, of course, like I do with everything that I list. Um, but it looks like a fullback. Like the whole thing is packed in there pretty good. So if anything, it's missing a card or two and 
far as I could tell, all the bigger names were there, so that's what would really matter. All right, so let's see what kind of oddball stuff we've got in this lot. These are just fun to buy because you don't know what you're going to get. So I don't know what this is. I think this is from a show series made with marionette, marionettes um, in the 70s, maybe. I don't know, but it's like cut out of some box. I don't know. I'll have to look that one up. And then I got a whole bunch of these. I was kind of excited about this because I've done so well with like Fright Night stuff and any other promos I've gotten. And these are base cards, but these are all from Universal Monsters. So you have like, um, this is the Werewolf, or the Wolfman, excuse me. Um, here's some more Wolfman. This one's pretty cool, the Wolfman. It's got them all featured up there, but it's got almost all the main... Uh, here's Frankenstein, right? So those little, that stuff just does really well. There's a big market for it. Um, Invisible Man is pretty cool. There's another wolf man in his human form. Um, I don't know what this is. The, this Island Earth. <laughs> so just random stuff I don't get very often, so I'm excited to have something to um, different to list. Got a bunch of these aliens card 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 back cards. These are like the cutout cards. I don't know if they were from the action figures or what, but pretty cool. Uh, something I don't have. Um, this I thought was awesome. These are from 1964. Adams Family. They're all in black and white. And that's some pretty old stuff. So I uh, don't see those very often. Adams Family is still alive, relevant. You got Wednesday. The next season of Wednesday is going to be coming out. And uh, they do have a puzzle on the back. I think it's Gomez and Morticia is what, what the puzzle makes. But you got some great, here's a great picture of Lurch. Um, there's Gomez and Morticia. Yeah, you can see Gomez's head on the back there. But pretty cool. A stack of 1964 cards in pretty good shape. It's pretty awesome. And then there are some baseball cards in there, 91 upper deck. These will go in my 10 cent box. I looked through these. I mean, Omar Vizcal was okay. But the rest, it's just common stuff. So, uh, unfortunately, nothing great in here that I can really use to list. But that's okay. I always need stuff for my dime box, too. Somebody, I'm sure, will be happy to have them. Um, all right, so here's some more. We've got, we've got plenty more yet. Here's some more of those alien cards. Space Marine Drake, you can see on the back there, just sweet, sweet art, right? Very 80s, 90s, 70s, whatever it is from Aliens. Um, where was I going with these? Oh, right here. Here's a Bishop one. So pretty cool. And I do have Ripley, so you've got Sigourney Weaver there. Um, here's the alien queen. How sweet is that? She is on the back. Attacks. Uh, scorpion alien. I don't know. These are just awesome. And then I got a promo card for the Rocketeer. All right. I got a little bit more 91 Upper Deck Baseball. There's the Star Rookie Checklist card. That might actually be kind of a cool one to, to list. I love listing checklists, as you guys know. But again, these are all just commons, no rookies. A lot of Omar Vizquel. I probably got like 10 copies of Omar Vizquel in here for some reason. Uh, here's some more Marvel. This is uh, Maximum Carnage. I'm not even sure what set this is from. Just as... Marvel events. It says 1994 Marvel cards. Spider versus Tombstone. Uh, Vermin enemies. So this must have been a Spider-Man set. Yeah, Marvel. Just says Marvel cards. Marvel cards 1994 is what it shows in that top corner on each of them. Uh, here's another... This one I think is actually from Skybox, yeah. Argus, Super Strength Venom, Chance, another checklist, awesome. 
Don't have a lot of non-sport checklists. That'll be fun. And there's one main reason why I bought these. I'm, I'm holding those cards out until the end to show you. But here's some more Universal Monsters. So you got Creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, this one's called Bride of Frankenstein. Uh, Incredible Shrinking Man. Just kind of a play on, like, the Atoms based on that. Uh, let's see if there's any other characters. Island Earth. Oh, Dracula. There's some Dracula stuff in here. So, anyway, those will be those will be fun. Definitely be some demand for some of those. Don't see them very often. Then I got a couple of Dick Tracy base cards. Don't know what I'm going to do with those. Oh, here's another Shrinking Man. Random card off to the side there. Then I thought these were really cool. I very rarely ever see the Wide Vision cards, which was like a thing in the mid-90s for some reason. Um... So I don't know, I was actually kind of happy to receive these. They're, they kind of stink to ship. You have to basically take your two card savers and put them back to back and ship them, kind of like you were doing, you know, multiple card shippings. But it does work. And this really sweet Independence Day one, where it's them, you know, attacking the White House. Um, so there's a bunch of different Independence Day ones. Really nice. Photography, stuff blowing up. You gotta love stuff blowing up. I I, I was trying to th see if that was the Twin Towers. I can't really tell if that's what that was supposed to be. I haven't seen this movie in a long time, so I don't remember. But um, anyway, but then there's these Monty Python and the Holy Grail ones. I was really psyched about these. That movie's so darn funny. Um. My arm is off. You see the blood shooting out of his arm there. This is the killer rabbit. Look at the killer rabbit there. Dude, these are awesome. The taunt. Uh, I fart in a general direction. The French taunters. Here's the uh, trees. The knights who say, neat. Um, so yeah, a lot of it is just kind of like parts from famous quotes of the film. Uh, hot on the trail. Here's a uh, sea of fate. So, anyway, pretty cool. Uh, some longer cards, little, little kind of like mini cards, a bit of a pain to deal with, but I think they're pretty cool and don't see them very often. And then the main reason I bought this lot was for the Mortal Kombat cards. The, I've had some of these over time. They do very, very, very well. They're hard to find. They are expensive. Um, was a scorpion and Liu Kang. So some of it is battle scenes. Here's Cage versus Hayden. Or, yeah, Raiden, excuse me. Like, Hayden? Who's Hayden? Um, this one I really thought was cool. The tournament begins, and it's got all of them sort of drawn there waiting to start the tournament. Um, and then there's a couple of, like, main character cards, too. This one's kind of fun. A strategy card against... Uh, one of the end, end enemies. And this is LE8. So this is a limited edition card. I think some of the other ones are not. They're just base cards. See, like, this one has just card 56 on the back. So there's some promo cards. There's some base cards. There's a little bit of different things in here. Here's another promo of Baraka. You can see it's got P5 on the back. Um, Kano. Pretty cool. Here's a sub zero. Um, but yeah, we got probably 20 cards or so of Mortal Kombat, and those will do very, very well. So that's that lot. We're kind of eclectic here on some of this, but that's part of the fun, right? Then I've got this lot, and then we got to get into the big. Oh, the big mamma jamma. This one's almost too heavy to list. This is 29 different non-sport sets, or sort of sets. Some of them are missing a few cards, um, but some real, there's some pretty interesting stuff in there. So 
some I can't really show you, but I can at least give you the idea of it. So this was a 51 card promo lot. This seller has a bunch of different 51 card promo lots. Um, I was surprised he took my offer because I offered, I think, 25. You'll see on the screen there. But at 50 cents a card, it's a no-brainer. Um, I do very well with the promos. This is Melrose Place. One of the things I liked about this was that it had a few cards in it that I'd sold in the past and I knew it would do well. And then I had some cards that I haven't done at all and I really wanted to pick up. So uh, it was kind of the right timing for that. So anyway, this was Melrose Place. It was a big hit show during the time of like 90210 back in the day. Uh, this is Archie. Oh, no. History of Comics. I don't know. Promo card. I don't know. We'll see how that one does. I don't know. Got a Chrome Betty Boop. Sold tons of those in the past. There's another one of those Bone 2 Chromes. Got plenty of those for a little while. Uh, X-Men Oasis promo. Um, this one I was pretty excited about. Kazam with Shaq. How cool is that? Prototype. It says on the back there. Um, the Crocodile Hunter. Who, of course, now is famous for dying after getting bitten by an animal. Uh, but anyway, this is another promo card made by Dart for his series, Strangers in Paradise promo. Um, Chrome Garfield. I literally just sold one of these cards the other day. I think I got $7 for it or $8 for it. Uh, here's another Chrome Garfield. Um, this one's kind of cool with all the workout gear on. Garfield stuff's hot right now. He's got a movie coming out, so got to watch for that. One of the things that I do like, I don't do much of anymore, but I used to collect action figures, and I like to watch videos and stuff about it, but one of the things that's super hot right now in action figures is G.I. Joe. So this 30th salute to G.I. Joe, 94 to... I think it was 44. Oh, 64 to 9, 1964 to 1994. Um, just thought that was really cool. It's got the old Yojo sort of look on there. Just very, very, very awesome stuff. It's Abbott and Costello. I've sold some of those before. A Chrome Archie card. That's pretty sweet. Um, Archie is more popular than you think it is, too. Um, Jack Kirby, Unpublished Archives. Jack Kirby, if you don't know who he is, he was one of the original artists that drew, came up with most of the looks of the early uh, comic characters. Uh, this Munsters um, foil card, I just had one of those recently and sold that. Star Trek in Motion promotional card with the Enterprise there, pretty sweet looking card. And a laser shooting out of it. It's from 2008, so that's not even that old. Pretty cool. Um, the Crow, lots of talk about this right now. There's a Crow remake coming out. This, of course, is the version with Brandon Lee. Actually, this is a Crow 2, I think. City of Angels, yeah. So I'll do very well. Three Stooges, same thing. I sold this one recently. does well. The Spirit, which was a great comic series. Um, this is kind of promoting their Ink Works card set coming out. Um, Lost in Space, what a great show for its time. Uh, another Ink Works promo card. And then we've got a Santa promo card. I think this was like to order calling card set. T-shirt. I don't know. This is like an order form. So I don't know if this came out of the packs or what, but still pretty cool. Then we've got some really cool, some more Universal Monster stuff. You can kind of see my theme going on here, but Bride of Frankenstein. Pretty awesome. These are all promos as well. This, of course, is Dracula. Wolfman. Uh, Phantom of the Opera. Tell me, tell me these aren't awesome. Uh, the Phantom of the Opera with the mask. Some Battlestar Galactica chrome. I just sold a bunch of Battlestar promos the other day. So these are nice because they're the foils. I actually sold this actual card too. The bugs. 
on it. Got a Pepsi promo. I haven't done very well with these. The, the chrome ones do okay. So it's like the purple chrome one. Um, these haven't sold real well, but it's okay. I'm willing to sit on those, uh, especially when they don't cost very much. This one's amazing. I didn't know this was in here. This is the Outburst Firepower Superman with the embossing. Just looks amazing. Fury of Batman, Speed of Flash, Strength of Superman. Feel them all for the first time. So it's, it was supposed to be the first embossed set. I don't know if it actually came out or not, but that card's amazing. Um, here's a Coca-Cola promo card. Again, usually those don't do that well. But this one is it's from the Super Premium set. It's got this really sweet foil border on it. I think that's actually going to do very well. Um, all right, this is the Smokey the Bear promo card. Had that one in the past. Uh, this one, this one is a, um, a breeder's card, I think from horse racing, something very new. I haven't had this before. It's got the nice gold border. And again, that those are kind of the strange things that sell quick Roswell promo card. Here's Bill Moulter. I don't know who he was, if he was a jockey, uh, oh no. Ray York is the jockey, and then he was the um, owner, I'm guessing. But anyway, so some more horse racing stuff. The Frighteners, great, great series. Nice chrome card there. Here's another one. I have one of these in stock already, so I've got that to add to it. Batman Master Series promo with the Joker. Pretty sweet. From Skybox, Superman from the... the uh, Supposed to be a hollow set of Superman stuff. Really cool looking. Farscape. Um, this one I thought was pretty sweet. With a hologram Winnebago. I mean, how awesome is that, right? These these are cards that they catch your eye, right? That's kind of the goal. Um, all right. Then we've got some of the Cookie Crisp. Yeah, these are the Cookie Crisp promo Marvel cards. So this is Peter Parker. You can see it says Cookie Crisp on the bottom there. It's pretty cool. More of the comic-driven type stuff. Here's the Shocker. These are all from the um, Cookie Crisp set. Spider-Man. Green Goblin. Uh, Sp Spider-Man and Dr. Octopus. Here's Venom. And then last but not least from this lot, is this Indiana Jones Masterpieces card. Really, really cool looking card. Hasn't been any modern Indiana Jones cards. Um, so I feel like it's time. <laughs> uh, but these were supposed to come out in 2008, I think. I don't think there ever was a set, at least not that I've seen. So pretty cool. I like that deal. Good variety, lots of nice cards, easy money. Everything came sleeved. I like that. It's kind of nice. And then, okay, so that's it for those two promo lots. All right, now we got to get to all these sets. So this is this is going to be a long show. Hope you uh, guys are ready for a long video. I appreciate you sticking with me. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and uh, share it if you think somebody else will enjoy it. And uh, ring the bell if you want to be notified of the next time I do one of these videos. Okay, the next one, this is one of my favorite little sets. It was overprinted, so I don't think they're worth very much, but I don't know. They're still, they just look so cool. These Moon Mars, uh, I call them action pack because they look like the action pack sports cards where they're kind of that embossed and then they're folded over and sealed. But anyway, so it's all these different things from the moon landings. You've got this sweet Buzz Aldrin card here, kind of 3D-ish with the, embossing this is uh neil armstrong of course here's neil armstrong and his seated shot this is pretty cool the face on mars um astronaut memorial here's alan what's his name again feinstein uh this is probably my favorite one unfortunately it's got buzz's face covered and he's one of the most famous but just 
just looks so cool with the embossing and then the reflection of the moon in the visor. Just they're just awesome. So it's like 36 cards, I think, something like that. Um, a lot of them are of the astronauts. Uh, here's Harrison. Um, some of them are just Mars. Mars is so hot right now. <laughs> No pun intended because it's really cold there, but um, here's a joint mission with the Soviet Union. Don't know that we'd see that anytime soon. Um, but Mar like traveling to Mars and the study of Mars and going to Mars and all that is so, so, so hot right now that uh, I think these will do real well. Again, they'll just be fun to list. If they don't sell, I don't care if they sit there for a while because they're just cool to have. It's kind of how I feel about some inventory. You know, 101 base copies of a score football set. And not that exciting. This stuff sitting around, kind of fun to have. So this one's really, really interesting. I don't know anything about it. Um, again, one of the reasons why I love these random lots. But this is the Flaming Carrot comic. So you've got this superhero that's basically a giant carrot with its top on fire. Uh, Flaming Carrot Comic Series playing baseball. Um, here he is with some dude with a super long, weird mustache. Um, the Panic. So that must be one of the characters in the comic. Yeah, so... The Goo Man... You can see on the back there, they've got some description. These are from 1988. Um, comic Images produced it. That's pretty legit, so I don't know. I'll have to look into it and find out what it actually is. Uh, might be something I want to just sell as a set. Might be something to, fun to kind of put out there as singles and see how they do. All right, so that's that one. There's many, many more to come. I have lots of my... So here's one that I can't show you all the cards of. This is the a Calendar Pinup set. Um, it's called Calendar Pinups 2, Gil Elvgren's. But some of them are drawn nude. So I can't show you all of them, but stuff like this. So it's like 50s or 40s warplane, you know, pinup art type stuff. These are from 1994 comic... This is comic images as well. Um, yeah, just some really cool cards, different art, signs of the times. You know, there, there she is with her typewriter and tennis player. So, um, cowgirl. But yeah, some of these I'm not going to show. So, um, don't know what I would do, will do with those. I'll have to figure that out. I know you can sell art, that type of art. Um, I just have to figure out what the best way to do it is. I did get these, uh, not too excited about these, but I can throw this stuff in dime box. People eat this stuff up. Um, these are the Texaco cards. I did get some of those with my NASCAR stuff um, for Texaco racing. It's got a bunch of like the big wigs on there, but Ernie Irvin is the big driver, was the big driver. So most of these cards are Cards of Ernie Irvin, they're using, again, career and review. I don't know that there's much demand for that. Um, but we'll see. It does have the limited gold ones. So these were the, where they have the gold foil on them. Those were like one per pack or they were harder to get or something. I don't remember exactly what the uh, gold foil. Uh, randomly, it just says randomly inserted gold foil stamped cards. Um, but I think they were probably something like one per pack based on what I've seen. So we'll see how they do. I might just, uh, like I said, just throw those in a dime box. I knew there was going to be stuff that I would get in this lot that wasn't going to be too exciting um, and maybe not worth listing, uh, but that's okay too. I, there, there isn't almost any lot of anything that you would buy um, when it's blind and you get it for really cheap. <laughs> okay, next we've got it's the next exciting one to show here. Let's do this one. 
So again, there was some sports stuff in here too. So that, that kind of caught my eye because I know that that, I know exactly what money I can get back out of that. There's these really sweet comic images, 1992 Silver Surfer, like cosmic cards. They're just awesome. Uh, this is Silver Surfer's first issue. That one should do very well. Here's a Galactus. So not quite a complete set. It just says not complete on it. I don't know what's missing and what isn't. Not that relevant, I guess. Here's the Watcher. Here's a great little bad guy in Silver Surfer comics. A lot of these are very off-centered on the back. Um, but this is cool with the Fantastic Four. So you got Thing, Invisible Woman, um, Mr. Fantastic, like just pretty awesome. Lots of cards just featuring Surfer. Here's Silver Surfer going home. You can see him there all in cosmic foil. Um, show another one here. This is Nova. She's a great character in the Silver Surfer comics. So got a pretty nice little stack of those. I, like I said, it's not a complete set, but probably 40 cards or so, I, I want to say. And they're all that foil. They're not like inserts or anything. They all have that cosmic foil to them so those should do very well and again i was looking for some marvel stuff so happy to see those were in there all right next let's do this one okay so i did say there were some sports in there um, these are kind of fun. Tops 2000 USA Basketball. Um, I don't think I've had any of these before. They didn't look familiar at all. Uh, but they're... It's one complete set, but there's like three or four cards of each player. This is women and men, uh, which I was kind of excited that the women were in here. Um, but you can see it's it's some it's like just different designs, right? Different subsets. So here's the ones with the eagles on it. And there's all those... All the players are in that. Here's the one with like the states map behind it. All the players are in that. Here's just kind of straight up shots, you know, of the players in the games. But um, I was mostly excited about, I really like these too, the kind of the wave ones, if you want to call it that. The rings in the background, USA and kind of the water. Oh no, it's over the earth. That's the earth in the background. Uh, but Teresa Edwards, you know, big name in women's basketball. Uh, Dawn Staley. Um, pretty sure Lisa Leslie is in here. And again, like I said, there's three or four cards of each of the players. There's Lisa Leslie. They didn't stick together. There's this, this nice, like, plastic, kind of like Collector's Edge was. Um, so, yeah, all these great women players. I didn't really have many cards back then. Nikki McKay, Yolanda Griffin, um, Katie Smith. I saw a bunch of Katie Smith, Sports Illustrated for Kids stuff. It's pretty psyched about that. As far as the men go that are in it, uh, we've got Duncan, Jason Kidd, uh, Vin Baker, Steve Smith. Um, so you try to find some big names here. Vince Carter, Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, all in their uni you know, USA uniforms, Alonzo Mourning. Um, and then here's, again, the women's version of that subset. So, yeah, I think these are going to be super, super, super fun and do very well. Uh, and there's a ton of them. Like I said, there's, I think, four cards of each player. So there's four different subsets. And this is a complete complete set. So that's got to be a good 120, 140 cards, something like that, maybe. It's pretty fun there. Team USA stuff usually does pretty well. I mean, obviously the Dream Team stuff does the best, but that was well past that era. Here's some more sports stuff. I was excited to see these. These actually do way better than you'd think they would. Um, these are the 1987 yearbook stickers. Uh, so kind of 
kind of like the Panini sticker books of the past, but these were tops license. But you got a cool one here. It says Phil Sims as part of the Super Bowl set. And there's a bunch of like puzzle stickers that put the Giants together. Um, I don't know if this is a complete set or not. I guess I didn't look at them all that closely, but I, I'd say it could be. There's a lot of them here. Um, but you just have so many like great players in this time. Like here's Walter Payton. You know, how cool is that? Who doesn't want a Walter Payton sticker? Um, so the, the big, big name players generally get their own sticker. And then the smaller name players will get this where it's like a joint sticker. And on the back, it'll say Wilbur Marshall and like the two players names, Wilbur Marshall and Eddie Brown are on that one. So, but they're all here. Some of the silvers are here. Or maybe that's all the silvers if it's a complete set. I don't know. Might be. Heck, no, there's a bunch of them missing. Um, but those are more of the main players too. In the silvers, like here's um, Dan Marino and Ron Stark. Ron Stark, I think, was a punter. Um, but obviously Dan Marino, some, here's Lawrence Taylor, you know, on that half. So these will do, these will do pretty darn well. Here's Jim Kelly on his own there. John Elway. Just don't see these real often. They're minis. Um, so yeah, that's from 87, 1987. So 1987 cards don't do that well. I think the stickers probably do better than the cards. <laughs> All right, so those were kind of exciting. Then we've got this. I don't, I don't know what the market is for this. This might not do very well. This is a, a Water World set. If you remember the movie Water World, um, I think there's like main character cards. Those probably do okay. Um, here's the kind of the header card that should do. Okay. These were made by Fleer ultra. Um, yeah, it's just scenes from the movie and, you know, I might have to lot these up or something. We'll see. Here's curious Gregor. And again, haven't seen this movie in forever, but I'm guessing like the earlier ones. So here's like all the characters, right? So there's the doctor. Um, Who's the main? Oh, here's Enola. I remember her. Helen. Um, Deacon. And of course, you've got the Mariner, which was Kevin Costner's character. So that would be the main, main character. So, yeah, we'll see. I, I don't know. I've never had Waterworld cards before. Then maybe they'll surprise me. But again, different stuff. Get some different stuff in your store. It's, it's, Makes your business healthier and uh, creates variety, some interest. Um, and you never know. I had somebody buy a bunch of Sports Illustrated for Kids cards yesterday and then some Garfield cards. Like the old, the comic Garfield ones that I got for a quarter from the boxes in Madison. So, you know, just because somebody does sports cards doesn't mean they don't do something else as well. Okay, next. So here's some more sports stuff. Um, there's a bunch of these in here where it's these little football heroes insert sets. These happen to be the Joe Montana set. Um, these sell pretty well. Of course, the big hits on these are the header card, like the multi-shot card, and then the main football heroes card. Those you can get a little bit of a premium on, at least I have. So that's the Merino ones. And then I think there's also, uh, I'll pull those up next because I saw they were on top. There's also these, which are Merino. So these are from 92. Now remember, these were inserts. So they're not, they weren't that as easy to get as you'd think. Um, same thing here. You've got this cool Merino header card and you've got the football heroes one. So complete set of the Merino, complete set of the Montana. And then I also have a complete set of the Namath. 
Uh, I don't even think I ha I've had any of the Nameth ones before. The header card again. Um, but yeah, I'll just see these different shots of Nameth through his career. And then I do have one more set. I don't see it on here yet, so we'll have to wait to get to that one. Uh, this one's interesting, the monkeys. Um, now, one of the things that I didn't quite understand about this one, this is 1995 monkeys, card monkeys, the band. Um, it does say there's two different number 21 cards. So I went to number 21 to try to see what was going on. Let's see, where's card number 21? Right here. Um, so supposedly these cards are different, but I didn't see anything different on them. Uh, front looks exactly the same. And then the back doesn't look any different either. So if anybody knows what that the variation is that they're talking about, uh, I'd appreciate the information. Uh, but anyway, so there's, uh, I don't know if the whole set is here or not. There's a ton of monkeys cards. I sold the promo cards really well. Uh, this is the header card, the checklist card. This should do very well. It's got all the members there. Here's the black and white one. Um, or just the color variation one, or maybe one that's not in good of shape. I don't know. So we'll see. But just lots of shots of them, you know. This was this is before the internet, so if you wanted pictures of your your favorite band guys running around doing stuff, this is it. It had to be, you know, real photography. I think these are mainly from the TV show, the Monkeys TV show. But anyway, so kind of fun with the monkeys. Like I said, I've. Granted, I haven't had base cards before. I've just had the promo cards, but promo cards have sold very well. I've had no trouble selling the uh, Monkey's promo stuff. Now, these, I don't know what these are. So this is, um, these are called Nasty Tricks, and I think these are from 1990. These are from 1990. Nasty Tricks, and they were wax packs. There's a wax pack included here. You got six cards, eight stickers, and a piece of gum. Um... I mean, I, I've seen these before. I collect non-sport packs. So I have one of the packs in that, but looks like mainly your stickers are just like mouths, things you can put over your mouth. Here's some here's some nails. You can put some nails on. Uh, here's a scar and a rat, a zipper, um, some blood, cut with blood. So just kind of funky little things you're supposed to. Here's some boogers or mucus. Um, yeah, very interesting. But there's a ton of those. So here's all the, the different stickers. Then there's these, the cards. The, so the cards are interesting. They're like little ID cards. Uh, reminder, your schedule for your fumigation. So you just stick one of these and in, insert it in somebody's planner or book bag or notebook. Um, Belching Society of America up there. Um, a charge anything card. Uh, a holder of this pass can go anywhere at any time. Zip popper. I mean, they're just they're kind of kind of different, and I like that about them. So there's a, just a ton of those ton of those cards as well. Don't know if this is a complete set either. It didn't it didn't notate that. But I've never had any nasty tricks cards before, so we'll see how they do. And these, like I said, they're from 1990, so they're not really that old. Kind of hoping they were like 50s or 60s or something, because pretty much anything from that era you can you can sell, just due to not many of them being around. Here's another sports set, or lot, I should say. This one's missing card number 53. But this is all the 1993 Pinnacle Men of Autumn set. I like these cards with the black borders and stuff. Here's Andre Risen, Thurman Thomas. Um, I don't know what card 53 is. There's no checklist, so I didn't look it up. There's Thurman Thomas. 
It's got a lot of great names in here, of course. There's Michael Irvin, John Elway, Barry Sanders. So, I mean, these guys are all, all easy money. Sterling Sharp, Warren Moon, Derek Thomas. I just sold a Derek Thomas Men of Autumn card a week ago, maybe. There's some more base, base guys in there, too. Dan Marino. Um, so you, you can always throw some stuff in your dime boxes, you know, like here's Terry Allen, Marv Cook. Um, some of those, you know, maybe won't do quite as well, but there's a Reggie White. Uh, let's see, Steve Young. So lots of Hall of Famers. Dion. Um, Bruce Smith. So, yeah, um, pretty fun there. Another little sports set, insert set, which I like. None, none of the sports cards I got with this are, like, base cards of anything, other than those, those Team USA ones, but I don't ever see those. So um, that might have still been, like, a little promo set thing or something like that that they sold back in the day. I don't know if there were packs of those. Uh, this is 007. Um, so this would be out your golden eye set. So this is the header card there. That should do pretty well. And then you got, you know, some of your bad guys here. You got, here's Pierce. As, uh, Pierce Brosnan was the, um, 007 at the time, James Bond. There he is, card number six. Ironic, card number seven is just two cars going down the road. You'd think that the 007 card would have James Bond on it. But anyway, so a lot of base stuff there. And then you do have the checklist card at the end. Um, so I'm pretty sure this one's complete. Since it's got the header card on the top and the checklist card, which would be the last card in the set on the bottom. Pretty confident they're all there. So we'll see what we do with those. Again, might lot some of those. Um, might just list them and see how they do. Okay, we're about halfway there. So again, thanks for sticking with me. I think this is kind of fun. Get to look at some different stuff than you normally see. This is uh, 1981 Donruss Dallas, which was a TV show back in the early 80s. These cards are not very good looking. They're just a... Color border with the word Dallas on the bottom. So some are purple or like this bluish color and some are red. You got all your different characters from the show there. I mean, this show was massive back in the day. I mean, who shot JR? If you've ever heard that, that comes from this show. It was a cliffhanger one season. Um, the end of the season, JR got shot, but it was never indicated who shot him. So that was kind of what everybody was waiting to find out the next season. So anyway, so I got a good stack of those. I'm pretty sure this is a complete set. If not, it's close. 1981, so a little bit older at least. I don't don't know how Dallas sets do either, um, but I'll find out. All right, next. And I'm having to dig in here a bit now, so we're getting down there. Oh, um, this is Bone. I gotta remember how to open this. There's a, there's all. They all come in these different plastic boxes, and by different I mean different. They all open a little differently, so I have to kind of figure them out each time. This is the series one Bone, so they're not, um, they're not chrome. But uh, if you don't know what Bone is, go check it out. It was pretty big back in the 90s uh, as a comic series phone bone standing there with a map I mean that's not even a thing anymore uh, yeah these came out in 1994 there's color and stuff on them but um, they're not chrome or anything but pretty cool my guess is this is somebody who never got to the complete sets and now they were just selling out what wasn't complete maybe although some of them are complete Okay, next we've got, these are kind of cool. I don't know anything about these, but uh, shocker there. Uh, this is Olivia 2. 
They're like fashion cards or something, I think. This finished 1987 piece uses gouache and gold leaf on board, and the model was taken from an antique magazine. On a current practice of photog pho photographing live models from which to paint, Olivia says it's fun to let the models pose, see what their ideas are before I start. Okay, well, there we go. She's a artist or photographer or all the above. So, yeah, it's just stuff like this. Um, some of these have some nude and stuff too, so you can, I can't show all of them, but uh, really cool. And I like the foil. It's kind of a nice touch. It does make things pop and a little bit easier to sell. But uh, yeah, there's some, there's some good ones in here. Let me see. This one's really cool. I like this one. Kind of like the fire background with the colors in the foil. Some of the foil is more toned down. Okay. This one is Dinosaurs Attack. 11 stickers. So all the stickers inserts are here, which is good. And then all the cards except number 46. So again, we got one card missing. Um, but anyway, here's the Dinosaurs Attack. So these were kind of fun. It was like what if the dinosaurs came back to attack Earth kind of thing? Sort of pre-Jurassic Park. DC Holocaust. I mean, getting attacked by a pterodactyl there. Yeah, very interesting. The stickers are all feature different, like known, more well-known uh, dinosaurs. So here you got Tyrannosaurus Rex, Triceratops, but it's, it's them attacking humans in each one. Pretty much. Uh, Trachodon, that's kind of funny. He's got a street pole, street light. Uh, 11, 10, 9. Yeah, sticker number 8 is missing, I guess. Plesiosaurus. Um, yeah, fun. Fun, fun, fun. I've seen the stickers do okay on these, so kind of excited about that. I don't know about the cards. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. All right, here is the set of those uh, Walter Payton heroes. So these are from 92, 92. But, I mean, Walter Payton stuff, yeah, I can't go wrong with that. Here's another, here's the header card. How cool is that? And then your heroes card, of course. So all complete there. That's nice. I don't very, very often come around non, big non-sport lots like this that have sports cards in it. It doesn't happen that often. So this one I'm kind of excited about. I've had a bunch of these cards in the past. I, I have some right now. Actually, I have some I have to list even. So this is 1994 Power Rangers. It's 72 cards. It's complete, it says, and it includes the inserts. And the inserts sell very well. Here's the header card here. So we're off to the right start. Here's the... Um, checklist. So we're, I'm pretty confident we're going to have the entire base set. Um, but this is where things get more exciting for me. Um, Tyrannosaurus, Dinosaur. So all the foil inserts are in here. Um, this is Megazord. Look at how cool that is. So, and I've sold some of these before and they've done very well. King Sphinx. Um, this is Babu, I believe. Um, here's a pterodactyl dinosaur. So you got all these dinosaur ones, of course. Sabertooth tiger. Um, mammoth, is this the one? Yeah, mammoth mastodon. Um, here we get to some of the bad guys, Goldar. Uh, here is squat, uh, squat, squat, squat. Um, Rita Repulsa. <laughs> then we've got this Green Ranger promo card. It's got the Rangers there, and then it's got Green Ranger on the back. I don't know if that's a legit card or not. I'll have to look into that. Um, ready for action. 
That one's pretty awesome with all the rangers there. Here's the uh, yellow ranger foil. And then this is the great group, so the kind of the final base card. So yeah, pretty, 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 pretty awesome. Liked that one. Nice to get the inserts on a set like that. That kind of matters. That was the very first um, Power Ranger set. Was that 1994 set? Okay. I think we've got five or six left. This one, um, don't know what I'm going to do with this. I'll probably get the, uh, just pull the names out and put the commons in a dime box, but it's 91 wild card. Um, not the draft, the regular set, which is kind of nice. Um, cause the draft really is just a half card that matters. Here's William, the fridge Perry. Um, you know, any of your, your main players at the time were, will be in this. There's Michael Irvin. Here's Reggie White. <clears throat> so it'll definitely be, you know, stuff to list out of here. Here's Barry Sanders. Right? So, um, but 102 cards, that's the complete set of those. No stripes, nothing like that. No wild cards, I don't believe, that I saw. So... So not too exciting on that one, but <clears throat> like I said, as long as there's some big names in there, you know, Elway's in there and Montana and all those guys, uh, there's going to be money in it. Okay. Just take the last one out of this one side here. Okay, so I don't know how well these are going to do again overall for the complete set. Um, this is saved by the bell of a college years, but there's definitely going to be certain cards that will do well, like Kelly Kapowski cards. Those are an easy sell. Um, I would think here's another Kelly one. There's lots of cards of Kelly posing and stuff. Here's Zach. Zach probably do okay on his own. Um, here's kind of the four of them. So you've got. Kelly, Zach, Screech, and Slater. Here's Screech. I don't know if Screech will do okay. Um, and then you have some of the, the newer characters, right? So you've got... Let's see. See if I can find one here. Um, Slater, of course. We got Leslie, right? Zach's girlfriend for a short period of time. Got Alex, who was Slater's girlfriend in college for a period of time. So there's Alex and Slater. So I don't know. We'll have to see how they do. I'll definitely list the Kelly and Zach stuff, I think. Um, individually, I, I would think those could do pretty well. And then see how it goes from there. Okay. So we have... Three, three or four left. Three or four left. Now these, I don't think these are going to do very well. Uh, from what I've heard others talking about with like beer sets and stuff, but these are Coors. I don't even, I don't even think Coors is that popular of a beer, so I don't, I don't know. But for all these different Coors art cards they've got the gold foil on the edges and stuff but nothing real spectacular in them no you know inserts or special cards or anything like that you got some of the old you know showing some of the old bottles um that's a lot of that stuff and there's a ton of those there's 100 cards in that set like why do you need 100 cards of coors beer but Again, throw them in a dime box. You know, maybe I'll find a big Coors fan at a show. Um, here's one of the some of the cars they sponsor. Those might do okay. So you've got that one, which is like formula racing. Um, got this one, which is NASCAR. Here's trucks. Um, 
Um, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how they do. But I don't have a lot of confidence in those. And that's okay. I literally emptied a uh, five-row box just the other day. So I can build another dime box. And probably a bare chunk of this stuff is going to end up in those. Okay, two left. Oh, actually just one left. This is the rest of the uh, Coors cards. So we don't really need to look at those. This, these are interesting. So these are, uh, these are like cr a crime set, true crime, um, which I, I've heard crime cards do pretty well or criminal cards. Uh, so you got the Magnaton rules. I mean, I, I don't really know what a lot of these are. Um, let's see. I can, I can flip to some of the bigger names. Here's one probably most of you know, and that's Lizzie Borden. Lots of gangsters and stuff in this set. All right, so that's the last one. There's there's a good chunk of cards for that one, too. 100 and, 150 cards, 120 cards, something like that. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see how those do as well. But I'm excited to try some new stuff. I think it'll be good. Um, there's some things in here I know will do well. And some things I can just do something new with. So that's it. Big box is empty as well. That's a lot of non-sport stuff. I do have one more lot that is not here yet. Hasn't even shipped yet. Um, pretty excited about it. There's some really good stuff in it. It's actually one of the better lots of all these that I bought. Uh, but I didn't want to wait just for that one to come in. I need to take care of some of this and get it put away. Um, but I'll put on the, a graphic on the screen here, the lot that I bought, and you can see why. Some more Marvel and DC stuff, which I'm trying to bulk up a little bit. Um, but excited to receive that one as well. So that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you again soon.